Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called Riffing on Roche. It's a 4x6. Painted this a couple weeks ago. It's one of the minis I'm uh, doing uh, in preparation for some upcoming artisans markets. Uh, I think the, the minis do pretty good sometimes. I can sell them pretty reasonably and they're neat, you know, people like them. Um, what do I mean by riffing? On? Oh, by the way, before I forget, um, members area, you can uh, see this painting done in real time and uh, listen to me um, try and figure out what the heck I'm going to do as I'm doing it. You know, and I think I try to bring some value to these 15 minute sessions, um, but really it's all there, especially. You know, I know some of the uh, the paintings in the uh, members area are, you know, up to four to seven hours long. Um, but this one's only like an hour and a half. And it'd be a good one to watch. Um, so why do I call it Riffin on Roche? Well, the way I see it, Roche wrote a song and I'm doing a cover of it. In this case, I'm doing uh, a cover version of his song on a ukulele. <laughs> uh, super small scale. I have to simplify things. Um, what attracted me to the painting by Leon was um, just that grouping of the trees I'm working on there. I thought I really love his way of composing um, trees, uh, groupings of trees. Also, I'm a big sucker for this particular um, style of um, composition or form of composition. This is what I think is called the steel yard. It's a bit of a seesaw, right? You know, you've got a heavier thing on one side and a lighter thing on the other, and it creates balance and tension and interest. Now, Leon had a bunch of uh, more houses there. I replaced it with one little house, and they did a pretty extensive amount of simplification. Also, he had these kind of more fussy trees. Um, being a modern painter, I'm not into like fussy trees with a zillion little bumps on them and things like that. I like to simplify things and so of course working at the smaller size really um, that's got to happen you know um, yeah so the sky I believe it's like a lot of times when I do these riffing on somebody like Dupree or Roche uh, I might uh, sub out the sky and do a completely different sky I'm pretty sure he has had a yellow sky um, but by the way, I just want to say, if you're doing something like this, look how I'm approaching it. You know, I not just don't be you don't want to be a house painter. You got to change things up. So I have a yellow that's kind of a bit more ochre based and another yellow that is a little more cad based. Uh, and of course, there's lots of white in both of those. And then down in the, the lower portion of the sky, I kind of get into some taupey uh, gray yellow kind of clouds. And um, I'd make a point to leave a lot of the brushwork alone, showing I don't over blend or over smooth. Now that's something that a lot of painters uh, starting out really struggle with. And you don't want to struggle with that. You just want to be um, leaving stuff alone. That's pretty important. And uh, in fact, if you could just leave your brush, well, I'm going to amend that because you need to leave your brushwork alone, but you also need to have a care about how the lights are hitting it. Like, say you've got a whole um, sky full of vertical brush strokes that looks fine from the position you're sitting or standing in, um, but you put a few like horizontal strokes in there or big fat diagonals or something. When the light hits it, say it's hanging in someone's home or something, that'll be almost as bright and present as something painted brightly. So you need to have a care about that. It's just one of the gazillion things that you need to keep straight uh, with the landscape painting. Now, I did the audio to this video once before, and unfortunately it got lost, and I was really laying down some good tips. I'm going to try and remember some of what I was saying there. Really, what I was kind of going off about was um, brushwork, right? How do you get interesting brushwork that looks painterly um, well for one there was one tip right there maybe it went flying by you put put down your strokes and leave them alone with a care as to glare okay um, there's a lot of ways you can hold your brush uh, so 
uh, really the next big tip would be change how you're holding your brush sometimes hold it like I'm holding it there sometimes grab the ferrule higher or lower I mean the handle heck you could even try grabbing it by the ferrule your brush is capable of a lot more marks than you think okay and uh, know when to know when they use them uh, and what's appropriate ties into my other tip which uh, those of you that have been with me a while uh, will know this tip already and that is you need to paint more okay if you want to be a painter and you want to be good you need to devote serious time to the enterprise and I, th I personally think it's a very good use of time even if you're doing work that, that annoys you or bugs you um, you can't really get good without doing those mediocre paintings it's just not possible uh, I know it's painful but it's not possible to get good without doing um, first of all a, far, a fairly large amount of mediocre and actual bad work um, of course you want to it's very natural um, to, to want everything you do to be great and that is just part of being a human being but however painter, painters in the old days really knew that good things didn't come without work they didn't expect to be uh, moderns as moderns we think there's got to be some kind of shortcut uh, like maybe watching a video <laughs> and you will get some shortcuts here you'll get some insights and I have to be honest with you some of the insights that I'm um, laying on uh, you, you you guys um, could change your life but not if you're not working if you're not working you you just go oh yeah that sounds like a good idea I should try that and then you uh, pick up your phone check your email and you say oh what's happening and, uh, I got a message on uh, old Facebook or Instagram or oh there's a new game <laughs> by by my favorite game maker I'm gonna go um, I just spend 15 minutes playing the game and then I'll get into the painting or whatever I mean there's a million things we can do a million excuses we can make not to work and I'm not um, not going to be hurt in the slightest if you don't paint but what I'm telling you is that it's really I think a great thing to do with your time first of all let's talk I mean you talk about games I mean there's no game as complex and challenging as creating a good landscape painting there isn't it just doesn't exist um, and when you master that game, maybe it takes you a week or two, um, what do you have to show for it? You got nothing. Um, when you do a good painting, you have a good painting. and You could sell it, you could keep it, you could give it away. You know? You did it though. You did something with your time. You made a mark. Uh, and you made a whole bunch of marks. And they uh, created a beautiful landscape that someone will love. And they will love it if it's good. And how do you get good? Well, you get good by failing a lot, really. There's no substitute for it. However, um, there are strategies. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I never set out to fail with anything I do. I'm always setting out to make something brilliant. And I have to say, I do so much more uh, consistently better work now than I did even two years ago. And two years before that, I was doing a lot more worse things. And, and two years before that, I had a period around 2012 to 2013. I did I did a few good paintings, but I have to be uh, I have to be honest with you. Um, I did a lot of stuff that just wasn't very good. And um, even 2011, uh, 2000, I had some grace though. Like around 2009 or 10, when I first started out, I actually, I you know maybe. Um, the universe just gave me um, some better paintings so I, I got some encouragement early and maybe that's happened to you probably it has and maybe that's one of the reasons why you're here is you you got some paints you made a painting and it was pretty good and then your next one oh wow it wasn't so good oh this is sort of hard but you remember that good one and you want to do another good one and which is natural yeah um the other, you know, talking about brushwork some more, um, you know, to twist that, twist that handle, that brush, like as you do your strokes. Sometimes that's a good tip. I really favor the uh, corner of the brush. In fact, all my flats turn into filberts. You know, 
consistently. Um, but that's, uh, you know, because I, 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 it's a habit I picked up um, because I was taught by, uh, you know, teachers that said you, you should use a, a larger brush so you have a more pain relief effect. And one of the things that I struggled with was um, uh, with my background as an illustrator and a penny ink guy, you know, I was really, really into detail and things. And detail and landscape paintings isn't really, uh, it's not a really good, good combination, I, I don't think. Um, there are people that pull it off and they do it well. But uh, for me, I want expressive, poetic brushwork, beautiful, rich color, elegant in sound and balanced composition, you know, and that's a lot. There's a lot of aspects of landscape painting a master, uh, which by the way, is, well, I'm going to just start talking about this more and more in the channel. I've written my book. It is done. It is done. Um, I am don't have it for sale. I'm going to do a digital version. Uh, I am looking for an actual publisher, so I'm not like putting it on Amazon or anything like that right now, um, because I would rather um, like I know who I want to uh, approach, uh, and I will be approaching them uh, with a completed book. But I see no reason not to sell um, some uh, versions of the, of the book to um, fans of my channel early uh, through my website and what I'm contemplating doing I don't know how to do it yet will be like a fungible PDF so um, basically it makes it not only collectible but also um, what's the word uh, it, it really gonna mess with the pirates out there not that you would ever do that but um, there's so many uh, so many books once they're in that digital format they're just you know free to everyone and I, I've just worked very hard on this book I've you know it, one of the reasons I wrote the book was um, because I always got people on the channel say how come you don't talk about this or how come you don't talk about that and you know there's like eight or nine hundred videos I, I don't even know how many videos on the YouTube channel uh, there's a lot I've talked about every aspect of painting every single ass everything I know over and over and over again but there's no way I can possibly remember oh I talked to, I don't have that kind of memory oh I talked about that on the video I did back in you know 2016 I went into that very uh, great detail you know uh, I you know and who's gonna watch 900 videos to get to that information so it's going to be in the book it's in the book and I won't say absolutely everything I know about painting is in the book but all the broad stuff's there so that's really pretty exciting and I'm just talking about it now and I waited till the end of the later part of the video so um, you can get excited about that and um, I will be actually doing some physical copies but just for uh, local distribution here although I mean if somebody wants to pay through the nose for the shipping it, it, it won't be cheap because shipping out of New Zealand just got pretty pretty high which you know by the way I do include that all the paintings in my store I include shipping because I don't want that to be impediment if somebody wants to um, have one of my pieces in their home I try and make it really easy and um, so there's a lot of awesome paintings in the store and we've had some good uh, good um, sales uh, at least recently people supporting me in that way which is just absolutely awesome and so um, if that's you if you're able to do that you know do it <laughs> and if you're not that's fine but leave me a comment or something you know or um, you know there's I think there's a thank you button or something you could leave me a little tip whatever if you're getting value you know pay it forward help me out um, but I all that said I just appreciate you coming around too so do what you can and I'll do what I can and we're all gonna do what we can and hopefully you do get some value and insight from uh, my little burble burbly burbly conversations here I do think there's probably more value in the members area um, although it requires a little more patience because you the videos in real time but some people do watch me at uh, you know three times speed uh, you can really make out pretty much what I'm saying so 
uh, not as fast as maybe I would have had to speed up this video. Anyway, hopefully this audio took, and hopefully you got something from um, Listen to Me Burble On. And um, until I come back with another video and another painting for your edification and enjoyment, do me a favor, do me a solid, take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Stay out of trouble. And uh, God bless you and your family.